do something new. God wants to begin something new. God wants to start something new in all of us. Amen. Anybody received that this morning? Okay. You sure? I'm going to say it one more time. This is our commencement. All right. Quickly to the text. We're looking at Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. I got to tell this joke real quick. One of the children, I'm not going to call their names, Noah. He came up to me. He said, what are you wearing? And I said, you know, I, I, you know, this is what folk wear when they graduate. He said, well, did you graduate? I love Noah. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, it goes like this. When the day of Pentecost, somebody said Pentecost, came, they were together. They were all together in one place. Suddenly, somebody say suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They, somebody say they, saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each, everyone say each, each of them. Our title today again is Faith for Commencement. Faith for Commencement. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, I have studied, I pray for your spirit, I have prepared, I pray for your power. Have your way, direct and guide me that your word would be magnified and exalted in this space. Thank you, Lord, for a new beginning for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all show Justin some love. I have my, my, my tea. I have my tea. There you go. Appreciate that. I made it myself, y'all. Okay. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Faith for commencement. Last week, we did it. Pastor and I, we, we graduated from Regent University. With the, to the glory of God. Passion received her master's in business administration with a concentration in entrepreneurship. And I received the doctorate of philosophy in organizational leadership. I have no idea how in the world we decided to do two programs right after we got married in the same house, in the same space. But to God be the glory, we did it. And I loved, I feel like we had the most lit graduation. I'm going to tell you why. Because when they called our names, we had to walk up and we had a photo shoot. So we had to walk up, they put our hoods on us, we had to turn to the left and turn to the right. But then after that, our dean had some holy blessed oil in her hand. And before we left the stage, she anointed each of us, prayed for each of us, gave an encouraging word for each of us. Then we came on back down the steps, had a whole another photo shoot, had to turn, do it again. And then before we got to our seat, somebody else grabbed us and started praying for us, speaking life into us. And so as we begin to go up and before we came back down, there was prayer. And the idea was to show us that no matter what you thought what you thought that you obtained, 
at the end of the day, it was all about the spirit that allowed you to begin and to finish. That it was the spirit that brought us to commencement. Amen. I feel like the book of Acts, somebody say Acts, is no different. It's a collection, it's a capturing of names of those who also made it. Those who were uh, going to another level. Did you know that the book of Acts is commonly titled the Acts of the Apostles? Okay, or the acts of the sent ones, right? The ones that was riding with Christ the whole time, them. But some believe that the title is incorrect because acts of the apostles makes it seem as if it was the apostles that was doing the work. And some believe that the title should instead be the acts of the Holy Spirit because if anybody was doing the work, it was the spirit. If anybody was opening doors, it was the spirit. If anybody was making a way out of nowhere, it was the spirit. The apostles were there, but they were only being used and influenced by the spirit. It is that spirit that allowed them to live and move and have their being, but it was also that same spirit that allowed them to remain, that allowed them to remain. How many people know that the same spirit that can allow us to go can sometimes make us stay? Even when we don't want to. Amen. So as we come to our text for today in the second chapter of Acts, these, these individuals that we see as apostles, right, disciples, those who was riding with Christ the whole time, they're nothing more than students. And Acts 2 is their commencement, is their beginning. And rightfully so, because these students have been in school with Jesus for about three years. They've been in some lectures, you know, the whole sermon, the sermon on the Mount, that was a long speech. They sat there. They had some quizzes. Y'all remember when uh, everyone began to come to Jesus and say, well, hey, Jesus, everyone is saying that you're this and saying that you're that. And G Jesus said, well, then who do you say that I am? That was a quiz question. Okay. Uh, remember when uh, they were trying to feed the whole crowd and Jesus turned to Philip and said, where are we going to buy some bread? Okay. That was a quiz question. They, so they had some lectures. They had some quizzes. They had some practicum. Okay, they were out there laying on hands and cleansing spirits, praying for people. They had some field experience. I mean, these students were on a storm, and their teacher was asleep. <laughs> now, come on now. Wasn't he asleep? On the sinking ship. He knocked out. He didn't do these long lectures. He told them to go out there and do stuff. He's been asleep. And then at the end of the course... The teacher get hung. What kind of school is this? Now the students are fearing for their lives. They hiding inside of buildings. They lying on Jesus. No, nah, I wasn't with him. I don't know him. Jesus who? Jesus' clothes gets gambled. They're on Facebook Marketplace. Let me get them sandals, them holy sandals. What kind of school is this? He's hung publicly, but then he's buried discreetly. Two people from the group that just killed him now believes in him and wants to do a recon mission to go get his body and bury it. He's hung publicly. He's buried discreetly. Then he resurrects supernaturally, freaks everybody out. Everyone's scared because he's showing up and revealing himself. The one that they all saw who died is now living again. 
And then they tell, he tells them, hey, by the way, uh, I'm back. And don't leave Jerusalem. Someone say Jerusalem. Don't leave Jerusalem. Okay. Here's the issue with that. Jesus was their teacher. And Jesus was crucified, okay, for, for what we call insurrectionism. Everyone say insurrectionism. Come on, big words. In other words, he was crucified for going up against the government. And the disciples were with him in Jerusalem. Okay. And so, therefore, if Jesus has been walking around preaching and teaching for three years, going up against the baddest people in the land, and we're all disciples, and we're all rolling with him, and we see this brother get killed publicly in front of everybody, in our minds, we're thinking, well, if they did that to him, what's going to happen to me? And so the last place they need to be is in Jerusalem. On top of this, Pentecost is happening. It's a holiday. Therefore, everybody's there. Therefore, this is the last place they really need to be because it's public. Everyone's going to know, y'all was riding with Jesus. But the same one that took them through the practice the practicums and the same one that had all these lectures, the same one that was on the boat sleep with them was the same one that said, don't go nowhere. Remain in Jerusalem. You know, I, I find that interesting because any of them could have ran away. Any of them could have threw in the towel and said, hey, this, this, this Christian living is not for me. But they remained, and they remained because they understood the God that they served. They understood who they were. They understood who he was. Even when they were afraid, they remained. And I, I'm coming to tell you today that the reason why we're having commencement is because we remained. We remained studying. We, we remained reading. We remained uh, doing quizzes and tests, even when we wanted to drop out. And you know what? It's not just for our graduates, but many of you all remained. You're here today and, and looking good. You're here today anointed and blessed. You're here today because you remained, because you wanted to maybe leave Christianity. Maybe you wanted to stop doing the whole church thing, but something kept you. God kept you. You understood that he was the one that has kept your mind, that's kept your spirit, that's kept your body, that's kept your dreams. He's the one that's waking us up every morning. Amen. He's the one that's starting us on our way. And that is the reason why we're still here today, because we have remained in Christ. Oh, we have remained. And because we remained, we have been blessed. Because we have stayed in there, even when we gave up, even when we wanted to let it go. Something in us said, keep pushing, keep going. Is it just me? Keep going, keep pushing, hang in there. It's going to be all right. It's going gonna, it's gonna to work out. I know it's difficult right now, but it's going to be okay. We remained. When friends walked away, when family walked away, when people walked away, we remained, Right? Throughout the craziest of grades, the best of grades, we remained. Hmm. When the car broke down, when money was hard to find, amen, we remained. God, I'm going to still trust you. I'm going to still love you. I'm going to still worship you. I'm going to still make you Lord of my life. Even when I mess up, I'm still going to be here, God. I'm going to try to make it work. Because, God, you're not going anywhere. You're not leaving me anytime soon. You're not forsaking me. You're not walking out on me. You're not closing the door behind you, God. You're still with me. And so, God, if you're going to remain with me, I will also remain with you. And so the reason why you will have a new beginning, a new start, the reason why I will have a new beginning and a new start, the reason why God is going to open up some doors, Somebody about to say amen in this place. Maybe you don't want a door open, open but I do. <laughs> Maybe you don't want a, a way made, but I do. <laughs> 
Maybe you don't have any situation to work out, but trust and believe I do. Because you remain, God's going to bless us. Amen. So point number one, commencement is the result of those who remained. Mm. Now, what's interesting about this holiday, someone say holiday, is they were celebrating Pentecost. Everyone say Pentecost. And and, and in Jewish history, Pentecost meant several things. Okay. So the first thing that it meant was the celebration of what's called the first fruits. Okay, the first fruits. And what that was was back in the Bible days, when, when they would grow the crops, right? When the fresh ones first came out, Jesus said, Yeah, don't eat those. Those are mine. You can't make bread with that. You can't make cake with that. You can't make pop tarts with those. That's mine. Which means that you must give that to me in worship to show that I'm the one that gave it to you to begin with. And you have to trust me for the rest of it. Now, now wait a minute, because I, I like pop tarts. Come on, Frosted. So we can't make no bread with this. We can't take, we can't do anything. No. He says, I gave it to you. So it belongs to me. Give it to me as a reminder that I'm the bread. Mm. So that's happening. The celebration of the first fruits. But then they're also celebrating the fact that back in the day, God came and gave the Ten Commandments. Okay. Y'all remember that scene? Y'all seen, you know, the movie. Amen. He comes down and he shows himself, gives these commandments to Moses. And see, we got it twisted because we think it's all about rules. And many times what drives people away from Christianity is we think that, oh, it's all of these rules that we have to obey. But before God gave rule and the commandments, he, he, he gave a claim. And the claim was, you belong to me. I created you. I am the Lord, your God. I got your back. I'm here for you. I love you. I won't walk away. I'm holding on to you. I established you. I know everything about you. Before he gave rule, he gave claim. And so they're celebrating the giving of the Ten Commandments. And the beautiful part about it is we, we may not even know that as soon as Moses got them, he broke them. Got upset, looking at everybody, worshiping false gods, broke the, broke the stones, and then God made new ones. Mm. How, many, how many things have God given to us that, that we've broken? How many things have God given to us and entrusted in us and we dropped them, we broke them, we got upset, we abandoned them, and then the, the mercy of God gave it to us again. Renewed it again. <laughs> Established it again. Called us again. Anointed us again. Chose us again. So they're celebrating the first fruits, then they're celebrating the commandments. But then, there's something else that's happening. Now we're, now we're in Acts 2, and the spirit, the gift, okay, of God's spirit is now about to come down on this festival, on this day, and bless the, the students. Amen? And so, they're celebrating the first fruits, Okay, hey, no pop tarts, those are mine. They're celebrating the commandments. You broke them, I'm still going to bless you. And now they're about to celebrate how God is going to come down. Okay, and so the first fruit, that's the physical manifestation of God. Saying, look, give this back to me because of what I gave to you. But then the, 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 the giving of the commandments Okay, that becomes the spiritual manifestation of God. God showing up in the spirit, giving the commandments. The first fruits, okay, the commandments, and now the supernatural. God is doing something physical, doing something spiritual, doing something supernatural. The first fruits is the provision, 
showing how I'm providing for you. The Pentecost is the proclamation, me telling you that you belong to me and I'm going to take care of you. And then over here is the power. Okay, I'm going to empower you. I'm not only going to provide for you. I'm not only going to proclaim things on you. I'm going to give you the power to be able to endure in this season. I'm going to give you all that you need. Okay. And so I like it because over here we have the daily bread. Over here we have the holy bread. And then we have the living bread. Mm -hmm. And so when the, what is so interesting about these individuals is when, they, when the spirit comes down upon them, they're not only receiving the daily bread of Christ. They're not only receiving the holy bread of Christ, they're receiving the living bread of Christ. They get all of him. They get everything of him. And he is now showing himself to be real, to be strong, and to be powerful in their lives. But what I like about it the most is when the spirit came down, the spirit came on each of them. Someone say each of them. Okay. Each disciple, each person, okay, didn't matter the rank, didn't matter the gender, didn't matter the situation, didn't matter the problem, didn't matter what they said, what they did, didn't matter what they passed in the class or failed in the class. When God's blessing came down, it came on each of them. So Peter got it, but so did John. Nathaniel got it, but so did Matthew. Andrew got it, but so did Philip. Simon got it, but so did Jude. And so did Doubting Thomas and all the James. Everybody got it. Even Jesus' mama got it. All the other women that was helping to, to uh, find Christ, they got it. Everyone received the blessing. It came on each of them. Is there anybody in the house that is excited to know that when God comes down to bless us, he's not going to just touch one person. He is blessing each of us. Doesn't matter what we got on. Doesn't matter what we look like. Right? Doesn't matter how smart or not smart we are. Doesn't matter how many degrees we have or not. God is coming and God will bless each of us. God, matter, matter of a fact, God has kept each and every one of us. Okay? God has provided for each and every one of us. God has opened doors for each and every one of us. God has provided miracles that only we, that we know only that God did for each and every one of us. Mm, each. Doesn't matter. Each. Doesn't matter what I said. Each. Doesn't matter what I did. Each. Doesn't matter that I laid somebody out on the way here. On the road. Each. Doesn't matter about my attitude. Each. Doesn't matter that I wanted to snatch one of my kids the other day. Each, mm, God's blessings, don't, somebody said this morning, <laughs> each. Let me tell you what, what that thing means so much to me. Anybody ever heard of imposter syndrome? It's okay, amen. Come on, mental health, look at y'all. Go ahead. And so, imposter syndrome is when it feels too good to be true. Right? Man, it couldn't be me. Something bad gonna happen. Man, I, I can't be this smart. I can't be this good looking. I mean, I can, but nah, it can't be. Something bad gonna happen. So let me kind of like not really enjoy because let, let me look around to see what's around the corner because I know that as soon as I relax, something gonna happen. That's going to mess up everything. The devil is a lie. Do you know, as I was walking up the stage, I had imposter syndrome. All this writing and papers and sweating and passing, but it felt like an imposter. Can't be me. It just seems too perfect. It just seems too good. It just seems too easy. They called my name. I'm walking. 
still feel imposter syndrome. They're praying for me. Still feeling like an imposter. Anybody just me? Just me. Degree is done. God, thank you. But still feel like an imposter. But do you know when I got back to my seat and I saw all the other doctoral candidates with the same hat and the same hood that's making us sweat, making me sweat, with the same robe. And when I looked and I saw how everybody had the same thing, and I looked and I saw how everybody looked like me. And if I'm honest, I looked and saw how many people of color had the same robe I did. That was the moment that it hit me. That I, that I don't have to be an imposter. Each of them. Look around the room for a second. Don't be weird, though, but look around the room for a second. Don't stare. Take a minute and just think about how good, how good God may have been to the person that's beside you or across the room. Just take a minute. Don't be weird. Just do it quick. Do it discreetly, you know. You have no idea that person's story, but they made it. You have no idea what that person went through to get here, but they made it. You have no idea the trial that person went through, but they made it. Behind the smile, behind our good attire, you have no idea the nights they spent crying when nobody was around in dark rooms by themselves trying to figure out how am I going to make it. But each and every, each and every, glory, each and every one of you by the grace of God you're looking good. You're looking all right. You're looking like you made it. Looking like you've been victorious. Looking like you overcame some stuff. You don't look like what you went through. And that's why God is bringing commencement into your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, that's why. God is opening doors in your life. What, 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 what do you think God wants to do with you in this season? Magnify times 10. That's what he wants to do with you in this season. Oh, glory to God. Commencement is for each of those who remain. It's for each and every one of us. Got one, one more point for you. I'm going to sit down. I remember I was doing my exams. Anybody like exams? Marcus, why do you, you raise your hand for? Y'all pray for him. Each. He like exams. That's all right. When I tell you, we had to do, in, in a PhD program, we have what's called comprehensive exams. And a comprehensive exam is basically when you're sitting at a computer and a random question will pop up. And you have to use every piece of your knowledge in two hours to write an appropriate response to, to that answer. And you can't have any notes. You can't look at any books. You can't call nobody. You can't eat no Pop-Tart, nothing. The system is on a web ca camera for us, so it locks your browser. And it watches you. And if you flinch and move too quick, the whole browser shuts down. And locks until you get back into position. That's a lot. That's intense, ain't it? That's deep. Messing up my computer, you know, my cookies and all that on the computer. 
some of y'all get that. It's okay. So the point is, when it was time for us to do the exam, they changed the format. I don't like being a test a test person. I, I don't want to say dummy, but I, I don't like don't don't use me. They 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 changed the format, and we still had the browser. It was still locked down, but now we got the questions in advance. Okay, all right, we'll see. We'll, you know, I get some time to study, look, pray, think. And they wanted to know, what's your take on leadership, on teaching, on consulting, and on research? Okay. So these are four, these are four exams. And you can't go to the other one until you pass the first one. Okay. So I remember working on one of my exams. And I came to church the next day. I'm excited. Praising the Lord. You know, we dance and singing. I get an email on my phone. You must retake this exam. I'm just like, for what? What I do? I wasn't moving. I ain't had no pop tart. I just... I just stood still, et cetera. And, and when I called my professor about it, he said, you wrote it wrong. And I said, well, what, what, what do you want me to do? He said, you have to write it heuristically. That's what I said. <laughs> I thank God for God and Google. I said, what do you mean heuristically? Some of y'all looking now, horrific, H, E, <laughs> horrifically. And I say, uh, what that mean? And he said, horrifically means that you must write it from your own experience. And I said, God didn't tell me that on the directions, you know. I And I found myself frozen because for the past four years of my program, they tell you, you must, you must write based upon the literature, based upon the text, based upon the research of somebody else. They tell you in the doctoral program, you don't get an opinion until the end. And so when they told me, you now got to write about your experience, I was frozen. Because I'm like, well, I, I don't know what I believe. I've been writing y'all stuff for the past couple of years. You know, I know a few people in this text. But you mean to tell me now, the exam... It's about what I believe. It's about my experience. It's about my thoughts. And, and, and in other words, I, I was writing, and I was giving them something from their perspective. But then, they want to now hear my sound. They want to now hear my tune. They want to now hear my experience. I believe when we look at the text, when the Spirit came down, I believe that the apostles, that when they did their final exam, that they had to praise heuristically, that they had to give God glory from their own experience. They've been with Jesus for a few years. They've been through some lectures. They've been through some quizzes. But in this moment, after celebrating the living bread, after giving God praise for the holy bread, okay, they had to now give God praise from their own experience. Church, I want to know in today, if this was our final exam, and we had to give God a heuristic praise, if we had to give God a heuristic sound, a sound of praise from our experience, a sound of worship based upon what we've been through, based upon how God has delivered us, 
not based upon what our friend said, not based upon what the preacher said, but based upon what we know God has done in our life, what would that sound be this morning? What would that sound be when we recognize that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? What would that sound be? Recognizing that it was God that woke us up this morning, that started us on our way, that gave us the activity of our limbs. What would that sound be right here in this moment when we recognize that it has, that it has been God really paying our bills? really keeping our lights on, really keeping our car together, really keeping our mind together. I wonder what the sound would be if this was the final exam. If it was all over after this, what sound would you give to God? What praise would you give to God? Maybe yours might be silent, but I tell God, I thank you. God, I love you. God, I trust you. You can have my sound. God, I worship you. God, I adore you. God, I think that you're everything to me. You can have my sound. God, I lift my hands up to you. God, I'll stand up and worship you. You can have my sound. God, you, I don't have to hold back my praise. I don't have to hold back my excitement. You can have my sound. Let's stand up, everybody, and give God a sound. A sound that says that, that you're grateful. If you're grateful, if you're grateful, what does it sound like? If you're grateful, if you're excited, what does it sound like? If you're ready for new, if you're ready for more.